Yo, welcome back to the Outdoor Without News, celebrities and hot topics. I'm super excited because I want to go ahead and talk about reality television. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys an overview of what we're going to talk about today because it will be a bit lengthy. Uh, first things first, Nini's son, Brent, has a whole new heart. I want to go ahead and mention that. I want to mention uh, Monday night's or Sunday night's episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac, season nine, episode three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Potomac is interesting. Potomac is interesting. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and get into a few things. And then what else did I want to mention? Potomac, we have Married to Medicine, which I believe will be a separate video, okay, depending on how I feel. And then I want to go ahead and speak to the stars of Aspire TV, Style Kings, Diedrich and Justin, interior designer, fashion designer. Um, it's a new show, reality series on Aspire TV. I got a chance to speak with them. It's a really, really dope show. So we'll, um, you know, have a, a conversation with them toward the end of this video. OK, so listen, let's go ahead and just do some housekeeping or not housekeeping, but, you know, give you guys some updates. Brent, Nini's son, y'all know Nini's son. So he was like part owner, I believe, in the Lanithia Lounge and he was running it and he was like the manager and things like that. When uh, me and Scotty and uh, who else did I go with? Jamie, I believe. When we all went to the Lanithia Lounge, we saw him walking around and doing his thing and making sure the hookahs was hookahing and hookahing. <laughs> hookahing. Making sure the hookahs were hookah in. No, making sure the hookahs were smoking and things like that. Listen, I believe he had a stroke like maybe last year, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, today or yesterday, we found out that um, he has congestive heart failure. A very, very interesting, sad, unfortunate situation. Um, he posted this to Instagram. He said, to begin with, let me say thank you, God. This year was undoubtedly the craziest for me. After several trips to the hospital and many doctor's appointments, I finally heard the unexpected news that I was diagnosed with congestive heart failure on June 19th-ish. In July this year, I went into a 14-hour heart transplant surgery and now have a brand new heart in me. That is insane. I could not imagine. Wow. Um, now that I'm back, still in recovery, I've essentially had to relearn how to walk and communicate, but I'm even more fluent. This experience has forever changed my life. I am so thankful to the family uh, that donated the heart. That's a blessing. A huge thank you to my mom and some other folks, his friends, doctors, nurses. So it seems like he has a really good support system uh, behind him. I'm glad that the surgery was seemingly successful. And, you know, um, shout out to him for opening up. Like, that is a crazy, crazy experience. Uh, but I'm glad he's doing better. And I'm glad that he's well enough to come on to Instagram and tell us about it. So shout outs to Brent. A whole new heart. I literally cannot imagine. Like, that sounds so scary. Like, um, oh, my God. Speaking of Brent. It's so funny because I was watching this interview with Giselle and this has nothing to do with Brent, but his mother. Um, I was watching an interview with Giselle and if I have the video clips, I may put them up depending on how much time I have because I have a deadline for this video. But Giselle was talking about how she thought it was so awkward and weird and bizarre that Nene would go up to Karen and say, beat Giselle up. So apparently about a month or so ago, Karen was in L.A. Uh, uh, I believe Nene was in L.A. doing the Emmys red carpet for E! and whatnot. She made her NBC Universal return. And they, like, met up. And somebody was recording, like, their meetup. And one of the first things that Nene said to Karen was, beat up Giselle for me. Beat up Giselle. Beat up Giselle. People hate when I'm just home minding my business. Can I just be home alone, minding my business, please? Why are y'all talking about beating me up? I was, it was so weird to me, so crazy. I gotta ask Karen about it. I never even asked her about it, but like, it, it was a little strange. And, and because I don't have an issue with Nene and I thought she didn't have one with me. So it was very weird. In today's time, Giselle just did an interview talking about, oh my God, that was so bizarre. Like, I need to ask Karen about that. Like, why is she going around asking people to beat me up? and? This, that, and the third. And I kind of felt like maybe it was a joke. Like maybe 
you know, Nene watches Potomac and knows that Karen and Giselle are frenemies. Therefore, she came up to Karen as a joke, talking about beat Giselle up as a joke. Maybe because we don't condone violence. I don't know. Y'all let me know. Okay, Nene, why is you going around talking about beat Giselle up? Beat Giselle up, girl. We don't condone violence. Speaking of violence, I'm so disappointed in y'all. I'm so disappointed at some of the comments under that Anthony video. We talked about Anthony, the assistant, um, last night or two days ago and how Alexis Skye and her two goons allegedly beat his ass and uh, they jumped him because I guess he was on the interwebs talking about uh, Alexis Skye's parenting style, leaving her child with strangers, allegedly. And a lot of the comments were like, that's what he gets. This ass whooping, you know, is earned. He cashed a check that his mouth can't wait. How it go? He cashed a check that his mouth couldn't cash. How the saying go? You cashed the check. Y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. But I was just like, wow. So like I'm from the school of. I only believe in violence. When someone is being violent toward you first, so at that particular point in time, it's self-defense. Or if it's a situation like when like a Karen is being racist and someone like just bops the Karen, then it's kind of like, okay, I'll let the violence go then. But like in any, any other instance, I just don't, I just don't, I'm disgusted by it. Like it's not cute. It's not cute. Like. That's called assault. That's called criminal behavior. Like, he could have been beaten to death. And I don't care if you're talking about someone's parenting or not. Like, no one deserves to have two big-ass knots and black eyes and scratches and teeth falling out. Like, that's not okay. Y'all are weird. Y'all are weird. I don't give a fuck what you say about somebody. I don't care if it's defamation. I don't care if it's slander. And that's a very specific, uh, 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 what is that, like statement. So I don't believe it's defamation. In order for it to be defamation, it has to be false. So, I mean, who comes out of the blue and says, oh, like you be leaving your child to strangers? Like he could have said she beat the child or she leaves the child alone or, you know, whatever the case may be. But it was a very specific claim. Which leads me to believe that it might be true. I mean, that was his best friend. They did hang out a lot, so he would know better than anybody else. But um, even if it was defamation, that doesn't give you the right to go beat up this boy and have your two male friends beat him up too. Like, what? I'm sorry. Y'all have to get rid of that hood, ghetto, gutter mentality. Grow up. Y'all need to grow up. Violence is not okay. That's not cute. That's not okay. I mean, the boy could have died. The boy could have died, especially when someone is defenseless. Okay. And don't nobody better try me neither, because I walk around with a knife. And some other things. Because are you kidding me? I know that I probably don't have enough physical strength versus a lot of other people so i have to you know take matters into my own hands and listen i'm gonna kill you or you trying to beat me up that's scary y'all need to grow up and get out of that mindset grow up grow up grow up if it's really that damaging if, if the defamation is truly defamation sue boss up and sue like, what, what are you doing? Beating people up and all, like you're grown and then you claim to be a Christian. And then you want people to take you seriously talking about politics and stuff like that. Alexis Scott, grow up. And everybody condoning that behavior, grow up. Like, that's gross. It's disgusting. Okay, anyways. Uh, moving right along. Shout out to Brent. Um, okay, last night's episode or Sunday night's episode of the Real Housewives of Potomac, I believe it was episode three, season nine. Um, the girls got kicked out of the GNA event. Listen, I'm sure they've been kicked out of better things and that's not a diss to Giselle's father, but I mean, you know, you have all of those people in that room and you're only, 
uh, raising a goal of, what is it, $15,000? The event is almost over. You're nowhere near $15,000. And I don't know why nobody is clocking this tea, but Giselle ain't raised no money. Giselle ain't raised no money for the Cancer Tumor Society. Okay, because it's the end of the event. You're nowhere near 15,000. You're nowhere near your 15,000 goal. You kick the, the few people that might have had a, a few coins in their pockets out the damn party. And then as soon as you kick them out the party, you go out there and, you know, give them the QR code to donate because, you know, you're pressed for time. And money and coins. And then Jazzy here closes the sprinter van door on Ashley. Thankfully, the shit has a sensor. It closes real slowly. And once it fills a human being, it opens back up. Okay, get you a safe van. Safety ratings. And then Ashley want to talk about, oh, that's harassment. That's assault. I don't even think she said that was assault. I think she used the word harassment. And I'm just like, girl, what? How you going to kick somebody out your charity event and then run after them so that they can donate? I went and donate to shit. So we get this, uh, you know, scene where uh, Giselle's twins are going to prom and whatnot. And we get Jamal Bryan and he's in his Gucci from head to toe. If you are a member of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, your tithes and offerings is going toward Gucci. Allegedly. I'm just playing. That's a joke. That's a joke. But listen, so, yeah, so they're sending off the twins to college. I mean, prom, and it's real cute and whatnot. And J-Mall is looking, you know, cute in his uh, Gucci. And the twins are looking gorgeous. And Giselle is looking like Giselle. They ask her in the confessional, oh, so whatchamacallit has a girlfriend? And she goes, yeah, I mean, we believe so. But it don't really matter how many girlfriends he has. Like, he's still the father of all three of my children. And that's never going to change. And that's never going to change. Meanwhile, the new girlfriend or soon-to-be wife of J. Ma Bryant is at the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church doing her first lady uh, duties, acting like a wife, and uh, sitting next to Kamala Harris. And that's Mayor uh, 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 Andre Dickens in the back. And she's, you know, she look good. She look good. J-Ma, she's, she's a good one. She's pretty. She's pretty and she can dress. Okay. Moving on. Um, so they're at the Airbnb. And Jacqueline came over with her baby dads. I believe that was her baby father. And, you know, Ink is there. Mia's there. The kids are there. And there's this weird, like, foreshadowing or, like, this weird moment where, like, the camera is panned toward the sun, Mia's son, and then the camera flips to ink, and then it flips to Mia's son, and it's just like, are we really still on this thing of ink believing that that's his son? Are we really doing that? Okay. And then we have this situation where Jacqueline was spilling the tea, saying that when ink and Mia broke up initially 20 years ago. That ink tried to get with her, tried to ask her out. The mess. The mess. Ink, is that true? Ink, is that true? That shit is true. That shit is true. And I bet you she strongly considered it. Okay, y'all let me know how y'all feel about the situation. And then we have a beef between Jazzy and Jacqueline Bruin. So Jacqueline gets word that Jazzy is calling her a sidekick. And Jacqueline is like, oh, there's no comparison between me and Jazzy. I'm a star and she's starless. Okay, anyways, child, the friend of are not getting along. And then, um, so yeah, that's that. Listen, I don't really, uh, Mia and her people, I just, I just can't. And the fact that in the next episode, Mia is going to call Stacy boring. I don't know. I just kind of feel like, first off, the triangular love story that you got going on is boring to me. 
That might be interesting. I think it's interesting to most of y'all, but to me, it's just kind of boring. It just feels like it's just boring. It's just boring to me. And then like Jacqueline, your sidekick, like that's not interesting to me. The most interesting thing that Mia had going on in this episode is the fact that she called Jizzy when she got kicked out of that party, that charity event. She called Jizzy tasteless, uh, classless. She said she has Willy Wonka ass furniture. And then I think Stacy was in the background talking about nasty woman that. And then we got that little preview of her corner suite in the building. Okay. Her new corner suite condo apartment building flat. Those were the two things that was, you know, interesting about Mia's story on this past episode. And then maybe Jacqueline saying that Ink tried to get at her. But I feel like I'm an outlier. I think most people feel like, oh, Mia's taking it. Mia is the star. Mia is center peach. Mia is this. And I'm just like, I mean, Mia is okay. Like, I like her. She cool. But like, I think Stacy's taking it. I think Stacy's taking it for me. I like Stacy. And then Mia gonna talk about, oh, yeah, she's a valley girl. And I just don't like her persona. And and it's just like what y'all could use some class on potomac and then last but not least stacy stacy girl go find you another man go find you another man so y'all know tj here stacy's uh you know boyfriend stacy's getting a divorce from the white german man but in the meantime she's dating tj and she wants to low-key have sex but he's a devout christian and says no sex until marriage but Stacy just kind of feels like, okay, I'm down for that because you're worth it. However, I still want to feel like you want to have sex with me. So she goes, zero to 10, how much do you want to have sex with me? And he says, K. And I'm like, what? What does that mean? And then he goes, zero. Then he was like so definitive about the situation. I'm not going to have sex with you. Ooh. Listen, um, Stacy, go find you another man. Because I respect his spirituality and I respect the decision. But something is off with this man. Go find you another man. Uh uh-uh. uh. You talking about some zero, like, huh? So listen, y'all let me know how y'all felt about uh this past Sunday night's episode. It was interesting. Can't wait for episode four. Listen. There's a new show, Style Kings on Aspire. All the information will be down below. I got a chance to talk to fashion designer Diedrich Thomas and uh, interior designer Justin Williams. A very interesting situation. They have a show on Aspire TV called Style Kings. Very Bravo-esque. It's very classy, very demure, very mindful. And you get to see um, these professional black men doing their thing in atlanta and i think it's a really good show so listen i had a conversation with them so let's roll the tape yo welcome back to the house where we talk news celebrities and hot topics i'm super excited because today we have two very special guests dietrich thomas fashion designer of hadiaki did i get that right i did right (laughs) awesome and then we're also joined by justin williams interior designer of trademark design co what's going on you guys how are you i'm good how are you good good trying to survive this atlanta weather (laughs) i know are you guys prepared for this um what is this hurricane as prepared as we gonna be yeah yeah (laughs) did did we uh do a, a trip to kroger yet yesterday (laughs) (laughs) um okay well i'm super excited to be talking to you guys uh listen i want to know okay so we have dietrich the fashion designer justin the interior designer you guys obviously are very creative uh you know a businessman i want to know how did you guys each get your start in business in business or just in the creative space in general you want to go justin yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I've been me. interiors since I was a child, and my parents saw this uh, yearning that I had for architecture and design. And my dad actually purchased uh, different programs, such as Chief Architect and AutoCAD. And he's like, "Here, they say that this is what you need if you want to do this." So 
Uh, he took these programs and I just learned them. I read about them and I learned them and I just started to, you know, draft up different houses and even our house, we were doing a renovation on our family home. And the contractor asked my parents, you know, what architect did you use to draw these plans in 3D and 2D and all that good stuff? And uh, my dad's like, oh, my son did it. And at the time I was like 12 or 13. And he was so impressed by that. And that's really where I got my initial start in design. Uh, and then I got under great mentorship. And even that contractor was one of my mentors. So that's how I kind of learned the inner and outer workings of a home. And from that point, the rest is history. Okay. And that's what's up. Yeah. What about you? You know, for me at a, at a, at a very uh, high level, I mean, I have no formal training in fashion other than the fact of being raised by a bunch of women and them teaching me the importance of looking the part. You know, uh, my background is industrial engineering. So I graduated as a, uh, engineering major and then uh basically worked in the engineering industry supply chain management technology space for several years and a lot of my business that i had with my company in the engineering side and, and the technology space was actually a lot of uh high-end big box retailers like you know hudson bay company so Saks, lawyer and taylor neiman marcus and then i also did a lot with a lot of fashion brands like armani donna karen Gucci, Barragamo. So that was more on the technology, engineering, warehouse, logistics space, right? So when I sold my company in 2006, I basically said I needed to start another company. So I like, why not a fashion company? So I started it out the trunk of my car. And still I was, you know, the executive vice president of this engineering company that I had sold, that I had sold. But uh, basically started out the trunk of my car and just grew it over the years and, you know, and moved to the first studio in 2011 and our second studio and uh, relocated in 2017. And then just kind of grew from there. You know, that's, that's basically what it was. Now, do you, um, do you physically, like, do you sew, do you cut, like, do you do all of the, uh, like, you know, hands-on work or are you more like a creative director? More of a creative director, but you know, okay. growing up as a kid, my grandmother used to make me sew quilts, you know, them old school quilts, but mm. I, I don't sew clothing. I mean, I've done it in the past, just playing around, you know, as a kid, but no, to answer your question, no, I have a, a team of tailors. We own our own factory as well. So, I mean, we control our entire supply chain. I mean, we do manufacture at other places, but we do have control of some of our um, uh, creative that we do because we own our own factory. Okay, what's your specialty? Suits, I'm assuming? Our specialties are, are, are definitely bespoke suits. That's the specialty, okay. but we really range from upscale streetwear to the boardroom to gala, so everything in between, because we make jogging suits, knitwear, we make footwear, we make leather goods like bags, you know, wallets, things of that nature, um, briefcases, and but our foundation has always been bespoke suits. Got you. Okay, and then I also heard you have like a... um. What is it like a nickname, like uh, the fashion connoisseur? Yeah, lifestyle that? connoisseur. Lifestyle connoisseur. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because basically, Justin, our business is built around experiences and moments. You know. Got you. Okay, Justin, do you have like a fancy nickname, a fancy title, or is no, it just interior designer? Just, just Justin Q. Williams, interior designer. So that's like my uh, persona. <laughs> Got you. Okay, um, and now what made y'all want to do TV? How, how did this come about? Were you nervous? Were you always? I know, Justin, you did HGTV. Yeah. Star. Yeah. What made you want to do reality? So my thing is when Angela Cannon of Aspire TV came to me with this idea, uh, of course, she came to both of us, but when she came to me, I was just thinking, you know, what is it that you're attempting to do here. And so she laid out this plan and it was just to showcase black men in business doing great, doing well, and a positive light on uh, black men in the arts. And that was very important for me because when I was younger, I didn't see black men as interior designers on television. So a lot of the people that I looked up to were Caucasian women uh, because it is a Caucasian uh, driven industry and definitely a woman driven industry as well uh, with you know, less than 3% of the Black population being interior designers in the world. So uh, when she came to me with this idea, I was like, this would be fantastic because there could be young Black kids looking at us on television and saying, you know what, that's the job that I want to do instead of going into a traditional job. 
uh, especially if you have a kid that is into the art. So that was so important to me. So when she told me that, it was a yes for me. Got you. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was always centered around uh, when, you know, a friend introduced me to Angela and just her whole idea of portraying two African-Americans in a positive light, sharing our journeys and our visions, you know, uh, being able to inspire your kids and show them that, you know, you if you follow your dream things, you know, you can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. So for me, it was all around the positive nature of the show and the reason why I decided to do it. Nice, nice. Um... Justin, did you ever look up to anyone? When were you on HGTV? Uh, HGTV was 2022. So okay. about years ago. Okay. And I'm assuming you grew up kind of on HGTV? Yeah, yeah. You know, I would always wake up watching HGTV, fall asleep watching HGTV. That was my thing. Who so, was like your favorite on there? Like, like Todd Pennington, uh, Candace Olsen. Those were people that I could relate to. You Divine know, design. I'm telling you, you know, Candace Olsen, she's that girl when it comes to design. And I really related to her design aesthetic. So growing up watching her, I was like, you know, that is something that I want to do when I'm an adult, you know. And uh, growing up watching HGTV, I was like, yeah, I really want to be on HGTV. And I, I, I actually auditioned when I was 19 to be on the original Design Star. And I did not get a call back and I was heartbroken. But mm. uh, so years down the road, they actually called me. So that was a blessing in disguise. Right. And now you're on Aspire. So listen, you're doing big things. Now, how long have y'all known each other? Are you guys friends? Are y'all close? We just met. We we met yeah. when we started filming. Wow. Okay. So have y'all become friends since? Well, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, we're working on our friendship, you know. Um, oh, not working on it. I mean, we're, we're getting to know each other because we didn't know, know each other, other just like you would with any friendship. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Okay, D I think I, I, I admire the work that Justin does. I think he does a great job. I, I mean, I love his, his, his ability to be able to take, you know, things of, of, of traditional elegance and mix it with modern sophistication, you know, and uh, I've gotten to know, know him and I've seen his work and, and, you know, looking forward to him coming over to the studio and us doing some things together. Yeah, we always talk about that, too, because uh, I love D Dietrich's style. So putting together a suit, putting together any look, that's not my thing. And the way that Dietrich does it with ease, I'm like, you know, Dietrich, I got to come over there to the to the uh, showroom one day. So I know on the show, right, we see you guys professional lives. We see y'all, you know, uh, with the career thing going on. We see uh, Dietrich. Uh, you know, mingling with his clients and things like that. We see Justin doing the interior design. We see y'all's assistants. But do we get to see more of your personal lives, like uh, your friends, your families, or even lovers? Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you brought that up because, you know, you got to keep watching. Aspire TV okay. every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Right. A lot more introductions because we filmed a lot. We yeah. feel quite some time. So there are a lot more introductions that do get more into our personal lives that you'll see on the screen. Absolutely. I, I agree with Justin 100%. So keep watching. Every okay. Okay, we gotta keep watching. But I, I believe I was at the uh, screener a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I believe your wife was there, DJ. Yes, my wife okay. was there, yes. Uh huh. And then, Justin, can you tell us if you have a significant other? I can't. You can't? Uh-uh. We're going to have to tune in. <laughs> you have to tune in for that. Okay, we're going to have to tune in. All right, so, um, okay, listen. So since we have a fashion expert and an uh, interior design expert, I want to get y'all's perspective on this. What is the first thing you notice regarding someone's outfit? I want both of y'all to answer. What okay. is the first thing you notice regarding someone's fit? And what is the first thing you notice when you're visiting someone's home for the first time? I mean... Fit for me, if it's just fit and not the ensemble. I mean, I, I notice uh, the first thing. I, I mean, I look at the whole fit and I and I look and see if it works for the personality. I looked at the break of the pants. So I just, I mean, in general, I look at the entire fit. You know, my eyes just gravitate to how the everything works in one unitary unit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I know, what about uh... I know the first time that we met? Dietrich was like, man, them boots. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. What kind yeah. of boots you had on? 
Was it uh, shade or was it a compliment? No, man, it was about fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars boots. I probably <laughs> underestimated the price, but I'm like, yeah, that's my client right there. Come on, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you can't come in here talking about you can't afford a suit wearing two thousand dollars boots. <laughs> yeah, I'm a boot connoisseur. I love boots. Right. That's that's okay, the only that's the about as much fashion as I can give you is boots. Yeah. But uh, when it pertains to somebody's house, the first thing that I notice is scent. Outfit, outfit. Oh, outfit. I have to do outfit too. Okay. Um, mm, probably color. Okay. Color. Because I okay. wear a lot of black. So if I see color, I'm like, oh, I should try color. <laughs> right. Okay. I never nice. do. Now house for both of y'all. I mean, like you're I'm going to somebody's place. house and you're you're judging, like you're looking up right. and down, like what are right, you doing? Right, 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 right. I know the first thing I look at without a doubt. Okay. Are uh, the countertops? I mean, the 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 cleanness of the countertops. I mean, if you got books and and front and, and all types of things over the countertops. I mean, I believe in organization, so I look at the organization of the house first. That's what I look at. I'm kind nice. of kind of with you on that, Dietrich. It's a clutter thing. So if I notice yeah, a lot yeah. of clutter, mind automatically gets cluttered. I always tell people, you know, you have to clear your house so you can clear your mind. Mm -hmm. I got you. All right, so we're about to wrap up, but very quickly, I did want to play a quick game. This or that, just whatever is your, you know, whatever your instinct is telling you, okay? Okay. So first one is streetwear or business casual? Business casual. Streetwear. For Justin, too? Streetwear. Streetwear. Okay, sneakers or loafers? Mm. Loafers. Sneakers. <laughs> okay, modern or vintage? Man, that's in between for me. It's like a cross by nature. I got to pick one. Yeah. No transitional. It's hard. Well, you see, that's what we're all about. That's what his <laughs> thing is all about. And that's what my brand is all about. It's it's like where things cross, pollinate and connect. But uh, man, I have to go vintage because okay. I can bring modern out of vintage. So I have to go vintage. I relate more to modern. Okay. Reality TV or scripted TV? Reality. Reality. Oh, wow. I'm surprised. Okay. Chill night in or wild night out? Chill night in. Chill night in for sure. Okay. And then last but not least, tequila or whiskey? Uh, whiskey for me. Okay. My type of guy. I know this. <laughs> I would have to say whiskey. Okay. Nice. Sophisticated. Okay. Well, thank you guys so <laughs> much for the. Well, what, we get in the tour. <laughs> Let me let y'all put your whiskey. Just a few whiskey. Uh, <laughs> wow. We have a whole collection. Some Wellers, some Pappies. Yeah. You know. Okay. Whiskey, <laughs> Did you cop the uh, Sir Davis yet? No, not that. No. No. Uh, I've tasted it, though. I, I still need to try it. I still yeah. need to try it. Mm -hmm. right? I, I appreciate you guys. Um... They're telling me to wrap up. So thank you guys. I'm super excited to see the rest of the season. Any uh, lasting words, any call to action, social media? When can we uh, check out the show and where? Yeah, sure. The show is on Aspire TV every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can follow me everywhere at Justin Q. Williams. Uh, in terms of, you know, you can follow me at Hadiaki Bespoke. Uh, it's H I D as in Delta E O K I B spoke B as in boy E S P O K E. Nice. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Appreciate your time. All right, y'all. Let me know how y'all feel about everything in the comments down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to create a great day. Bye.